The problem is rank these reactions in order of thermodynamic favorability. So we're reacting each of these starting materials with HCN, we want to know which is most yeah. favorable. So you're writing out the bottom line notation. Mm -hmm. That's good. These are all, aldehyde is the general form. This is an aldehyde, this is an aldehyde, this is a particular aldehyde. So first of all, we have to go through the nomenclature. Um, so one thing to, to keep in mind is... So can't you just call it acetaldehyde a regular aldehyde? Yeah, it is a regular aldehyde. This is just a special name for an aldehyde. But let's go through those terms. So um, after all, the IUPAC name for this would be propanone. It's just a type of ketone, but the common name is acetone. And the IUPAC name for this would be ethanol. But no one calls it ethanol. Everyone calls it acetaldehyde. That's just the common name for ethanol. Um, so we should, uh, we should talk about that. Form always means one carbon. It basically means like meth. That's why this is formaldehyde. It's an aldehyde with only one carbon. Form always means one carbon. Asset almost always means two carbons, with one exception. Acetone. <laughs> yeah. Because, after all, acetone is a ketone, and there's no way to have a two-carbon ketone. Because if there's only two carbons, it has to be an aldehyde. So that's not too hard to remember that one exception. The smallest possible ketone is three carbons, otherwise it would be an aldehyde. So acetone is the only case where asset means three. Every other case, acet means two carbons. Except for acetone, acet always means two carbons. Well, clearly then, this is an aldehyde with two carbons. That's how we would decipher this name. An aldehyde with two carbons, acet aldehyde. Again, the IUPAC name is ethanol, but for historical reasons, everyone calls it acetaldehyde. So this is, um, this is something that you would be expected to know in the test. This is pretty common, so it's good to know how to draw this here. All right, so this is our acetaldehyde with two carbons. Again, form is always a common name that means one carbon. Acet is a common name that always means two carbons, except for acetone, which has to have three carbons. Otherwise, though, acid always means two. So there's also, say, acetic acid, which we should be able to draw then. A two-carbon carboxylic acid would be acetic acid. All right, so first of all, we should just try predicting the product here. Um, this is a reaction we haven't talked about before. We haven't talked about what happens when you have cyanide and aldehydes and ketones. Um, it's pretty simple, though. It's a category one reaction. Yeah. This is going to be category one. Um, what would be a logical first step, say, between the acetone and this acetic, and this, uh, this is what we would call um, hydrocyanic acid? What would be a logical thing for this acid to do? Yeah, so we can start by protonating. Notice that that gives us cyanide as well. And now this should be pretty simple to finish off a category one reaction between these two reagents. Good. So it's pretty much the same for all of them, then. Right. So you probably don't want to go through the mechanism for all of those. Okay, so let's draw the product that we get from that. Yeah, so it would be good to draw the products we would get in all these cases. We wanted to go through the whole mechanism, so that we got it already. Good. Oh, why did I erase this?
Okay, good. So this is a pretty straightforward category one type reaction. I don't know if I included cyanide in, on page one of the handout for category one reactions, but you might want to include cyanide as um, a nucleophile for category one. I think I left that out, actually. Um, but cyanide is another category one. In some cases, they might just give you cyanide, and in some cases, they give you hydrogen cyanide. But it doesn't really matter. You could just use hydrogen cyanide as your protonator and then use the cyanide. The key thing is that we're using cyanide as the nucleophile here. Um, all right, so that's a basic category one. Uh, we're just going to memorize that there, we don't expect another attack. We're not going to try to explain that, but we'll just memorize this. We're just going to stop right here. So we're not kicking off the carbonyl oxygen. Okay, so um, that was the first thing, just to learn that cyanide is another category one type uh, nucleophile. And if it's hydrogen cyanide, you just use that to protonate and use the cyanide nucleophile. But we still haven't answered the question, which is which of these reactions is most favorable? Well, we actually, I think, went over the tools to, to figure that out in the previous session. I think we talked about how to figure out which types of reactions are most favorable. I don't know if you guys remember. Yeah. Yeah, reactivity. So which ones are more stable? Uh, no, the one that's um, most reactive. Most reactive is the um, formaldehyde because it doesn't have any. No, any the most reactive. Domain. Wouldn't the most reactive be the three three dimethyl two butanone? I thought that would be the most stable because there's electron donating alkyls all around it. That is the right explanation. Why do we want electron donors around the carbonyl carbon? It stabilizes. Because it's delta positive. Uh -huh. Remember, the whole reason that this is electrophilic in the first place is that it's got a delta positive. But it's not going to be that delta positive if it's got all these electri uh, electron donors around it. All right, so the thing that's making the carbonyl unstable is the delta positive. The thing to make it more stable is to surround it by electron donors. And we've seen that carbon chains are electron donors. So this has a whole bunch of carbon chains around. So we would expect that this would be the most stable. So we would say that this, so we're supposed to rank these in order of reactivity favorability. or favorability. So this would be, or, right? they don't say whether they want you to go from low to high or high to low. If you're doing it in order of favorability. So, okay, so we call this fourth, yeah. which means least favorable. Mm -hmm. All right, and then who's the most favorable? The formaldehyde. Because that doesn't have any electron donors around, just two hydrogens. So this would be number one, or the most favorable. And then the normal aldehyde. I mean, mm -hmm. acetaldehyde, and would, then the ketone. This would be number two? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. This has no electron donors. This has one electron donating carbon chain. This has two electron donating carbon chains. And this has two electron donating carbon chains and then these extra methyl groups that might do a little electron donation as well. 